Okay, we are going to run an unconfined compression test from scratch. Most important thing is to uh, train a good sample, take all the dimensions and the weight. We set, we set the sample on to the platen. You don't have to be totally in contact with the loading platen here from the load cell. So there's a gap here. So now the software is going to close that gap. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit the software TTUC, or you want to call it unconfined compression. The first thing you do is you go to file and load the template. The template can be a test that you have just run. You update all the information on the project. You update the information on the sample. You update your information on the water content. You do not need to touch the read table and you don't need to change any kind of the test parameter if you are happy with the way you want to run your test. This is all according to the ASTM standard. One thing you want to check, make sure that there is a communication between the program and the hardware, the load frame here. So where you go, you go to view, system. You want to check that there are live values for the load and displacement. As the power is on, upper unit switch, lower unit switch are off. All the light on the left hand side, they're all solid green. If anything is red, that means there's a problem. Let me show you an example. If I disconnect the communication, that start to flash red and green because there's no communication. Now, what you see on the computer, zero, zero, power is off. Something is wrong here. You cannot run your test. If you, try, if you hit run, it will tell you there's an error message, so you cannot. So I'm going to put it back in, and everything is solid green, live values, power is on, you're good to, to go. One last check that you can do, if you're not sure, you can press on the load cell, and you should, you should see about 20 pounds, and your displacement, if you have a gauge, you can move it with a non-thickness, and you should move by the same. That means your calibration is okay. Now, you are about to run your test, so you're going to run, you do start, you always give it a new name, never overwrite anything, because if it was a good test and you overwrite it, you're going to lose your data from the previous step. You're going to call it sample test, you do save, now you're going to get the message on the screen, it's going to tell you position platen. Now this message you're going to get it with every single software. Consolidation, triaxial, cyclic, stress path, uh, direct shear. That means there is a gap here. Would you like to close it? And you say yes. You always say yes. Now, once you say yes, wait. The motor is going to move up very slowly until you register a small load that's a contact load. Then, once you see it not moving, then you said, okay. Now you see it's now moving very slowly because it's close to zero. I'm going to push down so it's going to move faster because I'm creating a negative load. This is just a trick. So now it's going a little bit faster, but there's a gap. If you have a piece of paper, uh, you can stick it in between. There is a, a gap here, you can see it. So that's as much of a gap you have, and it's trying to close that gap. To close that gap, is going to apply about a quarter, half a pound load. That's a contact load. That means all your data is not going to start with from no air, no contact here. So you just have to wait, be patient. You can check it again. It's going to move. It wants to start when everything is in contact. Now, the load is about 0.616 pounds, and the board is not moving anymore. So that means there's contact. Very, very, very small load. So the gap has been closed. All right? Now, when you see this is stop moving, you see small load, you hit OK. Now it's going to move up, and it's been applied to view. Test monitor, 
Now it's active. Go to view. Test graph. Now this is your graphs. And we have wall versus time, stress versus time, displacement, and strain versus time. So now you can see everything that is basically crushing our sample. We're not going to let it go because we don't want to run. The load is going to just go up. It's already going to, we're going to go to run and abort. And so we aborted it. There's a load now on it, so we can remove the load. And to remove that load, it's about 160 pounds. We go to control load, do the same thing like we did before. We do minus 100 and we go. Or you can lower it from here. I'm removing the load. And you take your sample and you do your water content of a quarter in lengthwise. So stop. Now, you have data. You collected data. So what you do, if you go to report, you got zeros here, nothing. You need to load the file again to refresh the screen. So if I go to load, file load, my test, load my report, graph, here's my graph. That's my data. If I want to look at the actual data, I go to my table, view, next page. This is the data I collected. Not much, because I stopped it. Again, you right click, you copy, and you put it on the spreadsheet or Microsoft Word or whatever. You can email it, you can process it, you can do whatever you want. This is process data, it's in the report. If you don't want the process data, you go into file, and you're done. And device is raw data, engineering engineering data. So if I do a device, it creates a device for the device. Say if I do file, done engineering for a P. Now we have the data, either raw data, engineering data, or process data. For university, you give them raw data. And if you are in a, in the private sector, you just use a process data. Okay?